video we're going to look at the fundamental theorem calculus and how it ties together the integral which is the area under the function and the antiderivative which is the opposite of the derivative. Okay so we're going to look at three examples that do a beautiful demonstration of this. So you're going to find the area that lies between negative 1 to x is going to be your interval and you're going to find um, the derivative of the area of the function. So you're going to find out what the area of function is and then find the derivative. Okay, so for this example here, we're going to start with um, f of x equals 2. Okay, so we're going to start with f of x equals 2, which we know if I graph that, that's going to be a horizontal line right here at f of x equals 2. And the function says that we're going to go from negative 1, which is going to be right here, to some value x. So I'm just going to label a value x over here. Okay, so I want to find um, the area under the curve from negative 1 to x. Okay, so to calculate that area, first I'm going to see that this distance right here is going to be um, x plus 1. And then I know that this height, oop, I just um, put 2, I want x plus 1. And we know that this height is 2. So the area function is going to be a of x is equal to, um, the height is 2, so it's base times height of a rectangle times x plus 1. So I get that my area of x is equal to 2x plus 2. Okay, so I just found the area function, so it's to find the area, and then I need to take the derivative of this. Well, the derivative of the area brings you, the derivative of 2x plus 2 brings you right back to 2. So what I want you to pay attention to right here is we started with f of x, and look what the derivative of the area comes out to be. It ends up being the same value. This is that huge connection that we're going to be able to see how integrals, to the area under the function, ties into um, the derivative. Okay, so let's go to the next example. Um, we're going to start with, in this case, um, we're going to start with the graph of x plus 1. Okay, so that has, gives me a y-intercept here of up 1 over 1. So up 1 over 1 is going to give me a value like that. It's going to go like this. And I know I'm starting at negative 1, so I'm good. And I'll just go some value x. So I'm going to go, um, I'm going to create the hypotenuse here. And then this is going to be some value x. I don't know what it is here. So the distance from here, this value is x, x plus 1. So this entire base of the triangle is x plus 1. We know this is going to be a right triangle. And if I plug in x, I'm also going to end up with x plus 1. So this is an isosceles triangle. Okay, so I'm going to start with a function f of x is equal to x plus 1. All right, so now I'm going to find out what the area function is. So this is the area of a triangle. So I'm going to take 1 half. The base is x plus 1. The height is x plus 1. So then that's going to end up simplifying out to be 1 half. If I multiply this out, that's going to be x squared plus 2x plus 2. So I'm going to get 1 half of x squared plus 2x plus 2. So then when I distribute the 1 half out, I get 1 half x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so now like I said here, I need to take the derivative of the area, the derivative of the area. Okay, if I take this, it's going to come out to be 1 half of 2 is going to give me x, derivative of x is plus 1. Okay, once again, this beautiful demonstration. Here's the function I started with. I found the area under the curve, and it returns me, when I take the derivative of the area, it returns me right to my um, the derivative of the area function. Once again, another beautiful demonstration. Okay, let's try it again. Um, let's look at this function of 2x plus 3. So when I look at 2x plus 3, I'm going to take um, uh, y-intercept of 2, a slope of up 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Okay, and I'm going to go to a, a value x, so just to make it fit on the graph paper here, I'm going to drop this value down here. So if I draw this line in here, and then this is going to drop down and be x here. Now I've got a trapezoid, okay? And I want to find the area under the curve, so I want to find this value here. And we know that this goes out to be x instead. This goes out to negative 1, okay? So the height, if I plug in x, this height is going to be 2x plus 3, but the distance from here to here is going to be x plus 1. All right, so I'm starting off with a function f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. OK, 
okay? And I'm gonna take the area of X. In this case, it's a trapezoid. So I have one half. Um, if I go over to here, the height of this distance from here to here is just one, okay? So the base, uh, this is the height, so I'm gonna take one half of the height, which is X plus one, times the sum of the bases. So I'm gonna take two X plus three, plus one, which is gonna give me two X plus four, okay? Um, I'm gonna double distribute a property out here, so when I do that, I end up with X times X is two X squared, X times two X is two X, um, then I've got a 4x in the middle, and then 1 times 4 is just a 4, okay? And then I'm going to multiply everything through by a half. So if I take 1 half of 2x squared, that's going to give me x squared. Um, this gives me 6x, so that's going to give me 3x, um, and then 1 half of 4 is going to give me 2. Okay, so there's my area function. Now, we're going to take the derivative of the area, okay? The derivative of the area is going to give me 2x plus 3. Now I hope you don't think this is just a coincidence. I hope you're seeing the connection that your function, you take the area under the curve, you take the derivative of it, it's going to bring you right back to your function. I hope you see this as just a beautiful demonstration and a great connection for the fundamental theory of calculus that, cannot, that tech connects um, and ties together the um, area under the curve with the antiderivative.